What's good, YouTube? Steph here. Welcome to Theta Space. Today, I'm going to review the self-titled debut album by U Totem. All right, so this album was released in 1990, but I didn't become aware of it until 11 or 12 years later, uh, back in the days of downloading progressive rock MP3s from the Audio Galaxy website. Uh, one of the things Audio Galaxy did was suggest artists that were also being downloaded by other people who were downloading the same artists that I was downloading. I actually discovered Echolin this way, as well as U Totem. Uh, when I first heard the track One Nail Draws Another, which I think was the first U Totem track I got, it uh, separated my head from my shoulders. Uh, I had never heard anything like it before. Uh, probably the closest thing to it that I might have heard before would have been uh, Frank Zappa's more serious compositions. Uh, so getting to the group itself, U Totem was formed from the union of two avant progressive groups from the 1980s, Five uh, UUs and Motor Totemist Guild. Five UUs were formed by drummer composer David Kerman and heavily influenced by the European rock and opposition movement in the 70s. Basically, RIO combined the prog rock emphasis on musicianship and drawing on elements of other musical styles uh, with the anti commercial ethic of punk rock. Uh, the originator of Rock in Opposition was a group called Henry Cow. Uh, there were about six or seven other groups that were included in the first wave of the movement. So the other group that went into the formation of U Totem is Motor Totemist Guild, led by composer James Grigsby, who is not really a rock musician as such. He's more of a modern composer of formal music, or art music, as my music theory professor in college called it. There's an article in the Indiana Theory Review, a journal published by University of Indiana, uh, called U Totem's One Nail Draws Another as Art Music. The uh, author of that piece, Brandon Durfler, asserts that Grigsby is a composer of art music, passing his works off as rock. I'll link that article in the description. So the 5UUs and the MTG first recorded together on the 5UUs LP Elements, uh, released in 1986. Their second joint outing before U Totem was MTG's Shapuno Zoo LP in 1988. Most of the songs on Elements were composed and written by David Kerman, except for three that he wrote with other members of 5UUs, and one that he wrote with the uh, keyboardist Sanjay Kumar, as well as with James Grigsby, and Imperfections, the second track, uh, written by Grigsby and himself. Uh, this track is also on Shapuno Zoo, and in that album's notes, we find out that Grigsby wrote the music to Imperfections, as he did for the entire album, and only the song's lyrics are by Kerman. Uh, the version on Elements is sung by 5UU's vocalist Kurt Wilson, and Emily Hay sings the Shapuno Zoo version, but otherwise I can't make out any other difference between the two. For all I know, they're the same instrumental recording. So, on to U Totem. Uh, the core group is a quintet. Uh, Emily Hay on voice flute and piccolo, Sanjay Kumar on piano, electric keyboards, and sitar, Eric Johnson on bassoon, contrabassoon, soprano sax, James Grigsby on bass, guitar, vibraphone, and tapes, and David Kerman on drums, percussion, and tapes. And along with the main five, there are uh, additional musicians listed for most of the tracks. Uh, so here we have the personnel listing here. And the tracks that feature prominent guitar actually have different guitar players listed for them. So I'm not sure where exactly James Grigsby plays guitar. In live performances, it looked like uh, Grigsby usually played bass guitar. Uh, there's video of a couple of performances on YouTube on Grigsby's own channel, and I'll link to that as well. We got the lyrics. There's a nice picture of the whole group there. Uh, that would be Grigsby, Hay, Johnson, Kumar, and Kerman there. So there are seven tracks on the album in all, uh, alternating between odd-numbered tracks composed by Grigsby and even-numbered tracks by Kerman. The record has kind of a split personality as a result of that, with the stark contrast between Grigsby's and Kerman's compositional styles. Uh, the two standout tracks are both 15-minute epics, and they open and close the album. So the first track is One Nail Draws Another, with the additional personnel of... Uh, Kaoru on voice and Howard Shepard on voice. They sing on the trialing wolf sections, which I'll get to. Maria Moran on guitar and Becky Henninger on cello. Henninger was also a member of Motor Totemus Guild on the earlier records. One Nail Draws Another opens up the album with some dissonant five-note clusters on the piano, accompanied by hits on the bass and drums, 
and uh, some building melodic lines from the flute and bassoon. This is not really what your typical rock fan would consider musical. And I had a hard time getting into it at first listen. Uh, I know a couple of other people who think it's just noise, as if a toddler were just banging random keys on the piano or otherwise uh, abusing instruments that they don't know how to play. So that developed for a couple of minutes uh, before we get to the first verse with some creepy Orwellian lyrics sung by Emily Hay. So that goes into a heavy rocking part with electric guitar and Kerman's drumming in full effect, uh, mixing bars of 4-4 four, four, and 3-4. After another long passage of piano, flute, and bassoon, it starts out slow and gradually speeds up. We get to the first trilingual uh, section. Uh, just before the first verse, there was a short section where Hay spoke a line, uh, what is the great difference between man and the animals? Uh, along with Howard Shepard saying the same thing in German and Kaoru saying it in Japanese. Uh, here is a full motet with the three vocalists all singing different melodic lines in their different languages and each line doubled by instruments. And that goes into the second English-only verse, which is, of course, just with Emily Hay. That's about the midpoint of the song, and it continues to develop in uh, the same vein. Uh, there's another trilingual passage, another rocking out section, a final verse, and a prolonged coda. The second track is uh, Kerman's Two Looks at One End, which includes Herb Diamant on soprano sax. There's a steady driving rhythm pounding out the verses, uh, highlighting the differences in the writing styles between Kerman and Grigsby. Grigsby being more like a neoclassical, if you want to use that term, sort of composer, and Grigsby is really more of a rock guy. The third track is Dance of the Awkward, a short Grigsby instrumental. It's only two and a half minutes, and it has no additional personnel outside the main quintet. I'd probably like it better if it were longer, but it's just kind of there. The fourth track is a Kerman track, Both Your Houses, which uh, features Greg Conway on guitar and Kurt Wilson, who was the 5UU's vocalist on the previous records. It starts with a somber melody on the solo flute, and then uh, Emily Hay and Kurt Wilson together sing the uh, verses. My favorite parts of this one are the middle section, where Wilson sings a few lines in a very mellow style, while behind him Emily Hay screams like a murder victim. And there's also Kerman's uh, drum fills in the outro before the song ends with the same flute melody that it began with. Pretty good track. Not one of the best, but pretty good track. That's followed by Yellow Umbrella Gallery, uh, another Grigsby composition. It's full of sound clips of people talking, mostly about the music industry. Uh, in the CD booklet, it's dedicated to victims of popularity with slight apologies to B. Wilson, D. Ellington, M. Sissioni, or however... Madonna's family name is pronounced, I don't know, but it's referring to her. The additional people on this one are Rod Poole on guitar and uh, Georgia Grigsby, James's wife, on voice. She speaks Chinese. Uh, and here are the lyrics of that section uh, right there. Uh, I don't know what she's saying uh, because I can't speak or read Chinese but uh, that opens and closes the track. I can never really pay attention to the music in this track because the spoken words, the audio clips, just dominate it. The next track, The Judas Goat, is Kerman's best track on the album, or at least I think so. It opens with a solo flute melody like Both Your Houses does, but where the earlier track's melody is somber, uh, this one is ominous, foreboding, and almost menacing. Suddenly the whole band's playing on a driving, discordant rock beat. Oh, uh, when it calms down, the pulse of the rhythm keeps going, uh, and Emily Hay sings the lyrics, My hopes live beyond the realm of white-fleeced sheep, whose trust in the Judas goat is never less questioned than at the very moment it leads them to slaughter. Then it repeats the flute melody that opened the song, and uh, it's uh, even more foreboding this time, uh, having heard the lyrics. The album closes with Grigsby's other epic, Vagabond's Home, which also includes Miriam Meyer on violin. I think it sounds kind of pastoral, but that might just be my interpreting the context from the lyrics. It's a lot more accessible and easy to follow than One Nail, probably why for the longest time it was my favorite track on the album uh, before I learned how to really hear the more challenging track. Uh, now it's my second favorite by a very narrow margin, and uh, The Judas Goat fills out the album's top three tracks for me. So that's my review of You Totem, the first album by You Totem. Uh, on a scale of 0 to 10, I'd rank it a solid 7. Uh, as good as the best tracks are, I gotta knock some points off for the others that just aren't as good. But bottom line, I recommend it for the two epics alone. They take up about half of the album, and most of the rest is a good listen as well. 
Have you heard this record? Uh, or have you heard anything else by 5UUs or Motor Totemus Guild? Uh, let me know in the comments if you get into more difficult listening music like this. Also, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. They don't cost anything. Next up, I'm going to be doing a ranking of the studio albums by Japanese prog group Kenso, so keep watching this space if that's something you'd be interested in. Uh, thanks for watching, and Steph out. Peace. Thank you.